Section. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. King Kate. Yo, what's good, kings and queens? It's your boy, Don, and I'm back for another reaction video today. If you're new to the channel, go down below, hit the subscribe button, and notification bell, and hit all so you know every time I post you her. If you're not new to the channel, go down below, hit that like button. Thank you for popping back out. I appreciate it. As y'all can see by the title and thumbnail, it's going to be better than one, I'm going to tell you. Today, we're going to be reacting to how cops tricked this teen into a confession. I don't even know what he confessed, but I'm excited to see it because... It's 2024. I don't know, you know, I don't know the methods they're using. I feel like if you did it, you did it. If not, if not, I don't know. Other than that, let's get into it, you heard. I'm sure y'all clicked on it by the title, so by the end of this video, I will have a better one. Thank y'all for tuning in. Hit that like button before we even get started, please. It's free. Thank you. Subscribe, you heard. All right, let's see. I know you were involved in an incident a couple of prize ago in Dollar General, okay? What happened to the gun? Threw it. Threw it. Threw it. Threw it. Threw it. It was a shocking crime in a small town where everyone was a familiar face. Particularly standout student athletes. The evidence seems irrefutable. Multiple witnesses identify the same suspect, and he actually confesses to be the gunman. What happened to the gun? Threw it. Threw it. Threw it. Threw it. Threw it. Threw it. Yet. He has not served one day in prison. How's this possible? Waukegan, Illinois. It's a place where everybody knows your name. Neighbors and friends, everyone is a familiar face. Waukegan, Illinois. Dang. So yeah, everybody definitely knows each other. Is that the airport? It's a place where everybody knows your name. Neighbors and friends, everyone is a familiar face. Like many quiet small towns, you'll find a tight-knit community that enjoys its historic landmarks, beaches, Basketball holds particular significance in Waukegan. The Bulldogs games draw attention from students, families, and the local community. That quiet comfort of small town living was shattered on a cold day in February 2022, around 7.15 p.m. at the Dollar General on Grand Avenue. It becomes a day marked by violence and fear as a 19-year-old- Yo, that's your first sign right there. That there's nothing going on there. It's a Dollar General. I'm not saying that to say that, but like, Usually in most small towns or like where it really get dry, it's usually like one family dollar or a dollar general somewhere. That's it. <laughs> and in the gas station. Old store clerk, Elvis Ramos, faces down the barrel of a gun. This incident began when the hardworking and unassuming young store clerk was forced to confront a suspected shoplifter. He asks the shoplifter to leave. Things as Dang, this man lost his life for a shoplifter. Escalate, and the man leaves the store, returning with a gun. As Ramos tries to shut the front door, the gunman fires. The bullet pierces Ramos in the skull near his right eye. Cloaked in the anonymity of a mask and ensuing confusion, the shoplifter disappears in the chaos and terror, igniting a manhunt that grips the city. Waukegan police spring into action, canvassing the area, gathering evidence, and desperately piecing together the fragment. Yo, my boy worked a whole day of work, not thinking nothing is going to happen. Till 10 minutes before that incident. It's crazy, yo. ...of what happened. The police department releases surveillance photos of the suspect immediately. And the community pitches in to help solve the crime, with multiple people pointing the finger at the same person. The Waukegan police zero in on their prime suspect. A towering, thin-framed, 6'3", 155-pound basketball player named Martel Williams. All right, so my son was probably taller than boy, too. A 15-year-old freshman at Waukegan High School. With time being of the essence, officers burst through the doors of the school, navigating the hallways of teens in a fervent search for their suspect. The lean and lanky teen gave no resistance as the handcuffs were wrapped around his wrists. He was arrested and escorted away in front of his classmates and teachers, who were left in stunned silence by what had just unfolded in front of their eyes. Even more stunning is what happens next. Police announced that 15-year-old Martel Williams has confessed to the crime. I know you were involved in an incident a couple of prize ago to Dollar General, okay? Um, I know a lot about the incident, okay? I've watched the video. And yet Williams Dang. walks free today. And that's the main thing. He knows video surveillance too. While Elvis Ramos continues the battle to save his right eye. How is this possible? As it turns out, on that cold day in February, Martel Williams was nowhere near the crime scene. Instead, he was approximately 20 miles away in Lincolnshire, doing exactly what he's most well known for. 
Martell was playing in a basketball game at Adlai E. Stevenson High School. And there's irrefutable proof. The Williams family provides a digitally timestamped photo of Martell at the game in Lincolnshire. So why did Martell confess to a crime he definitely didn't commit? Martell Williams was detained by the police for two days following the dollar store shooting incident. During this period, he was in their custody undergoing intense interrogation, especially for a 15-year-old. Many reported that the footage shows detectives allegedly used deceptive tactics and manipulative strategies during Martell's 48 hours in custody. And coupled with the absence of legal representation during Martell's extended stay in this cold, unforgiving interrogation room, this created the perfect environment for a frightened and vulnerable teenager to confess to a crime he did not commit. Go ahead and say what you wanted to say about the situation. First, Detective Sean Ains, the lead investigator, work to negate the teen's Miranda right. Yo, I'm not gonna lie, I'm wild lost, so now I'm dumb interested. I'm locked in, y'all, I'm locked in. It's the right to remain silent, that means you're not the same thing. The detective informed Martell of his Miranda rights, but then suggested that speaking freely would benefit him. It's just knowing I go forward, I think your words are gonna be extremely valuable in this situation that I, I don't think, um, I don't think you have anything to necessarily fear Man, that's them lying to you. Boy, as soon as you tell, you're getting locked up. It's over with. But apparently, he might not have done it. Sadly, many officers still use this tactic in order to encourage <laughs> minors to waive their rights and also to make them feel that without speaking to a lawyer, they might receive a more favorable outcome. Martel, possibly feeling reassured by Ayn's suggestion that honesty would remove his burden, waived his rights without fully understanding the implications. You need something to be aware of. You need something to understand. Something he's talking about. Just ask me. Okay. I'm here on behalf of you. Realistically. Wait, who is that? That's another officer. Talking about. Just ask me. Okay. I'm here on behalf of you. Realistically. Lawyer coming here within the next five ten minutes. That's not gonna happen. So if you wanna have a lawyer, that's cool. But again, this conversation is gonna end for right now, okay? Um, yeah. No, I, I have to ask you, do you wanna have a lawyer? Do you wanna have a lawyer? No. Do you wanna talk to me? The second is suggesting leniency. Detective Ames introduces the idea that the shooting could have been in self-defense or accidental, and shared stories of others walking free under similar circumstances, leading Martel to believe that admitting to either of these scenarios could result in leniency. Like I already explained to you, you reacting to maybe someone committing a crime or an offense against you versus you going and out being the aggressor and seriously harming somebody, two to totally different scenarios. People walk out of this building after shooting people because they explain the context of the situation. They explain it was a self-defense scenario, and look, I thought my life was in danger. We check everything out, we talk to people, we make a determination. That's that's exactly what it looked like. This guy had to shoot this other guy because he felt he had to. You know, he felt like he was in fear of death and great bodily harm, and he had no choice. You know what I mean? And I've walked people, my favorite people home, and I've shot people. They never spent a day in danger, but that all has to rest on that person being forthcoming with me, telling me the truth, is what I'm saying. Placing emphasis on Martel's fear and desire to go home suggests that admitting or to the crime under specific contexts could lead to immediate release. Sure. So, I know you didn't go into that store with the intention of shooting. I know that. Um, but things happen, okay? Uh, things can unfold quickly. Maybe this guy posed a threat to you. Like I said, I watched the video, he put hands on I saw that he's significantly bigger than you. He could probably hurt you. This tactic likely compounded the youngster's anxiety and confusion, steering him to- I'm wild well confused. So was it him or not? Because they just said that it was proof showing that it wasn't him. But whoever it was got hemmed up. Toward providing a false confession in the hopes of getting to go home. I can only maybe think. Oh, so he was just saying anything just so he could go to the crib. Yo, how'd I get dark? Yo, what was going through your head at that time? I, I can't put the words in your mouth unless you tell me, unless you explain the situation. You know what I'm saying? It's all, all I have right now is the video to go off of, and that's it. Ames told Martel that there was abundant evidence implicating him in the shooting, asserting confidently that he was involved, despite the fact that no such evidence had been uncovered. Like I said initially, I'm not here to debate whether you were there or not. It's like, I know you were there. I can tell you, you wouldn't be here talking to me right now if uh, I didn't have an 
abundance of information that you know you were there and you were involved. Well, that's okay. And so that's not a question in my mind. So I'm not here to even discuss that part. Officers sometimes use tactics to suggest guilt is already established beyond doubt. No, nah, my boy, he's just saying anything, literally. Making resistance seem futile. Facing the perceived weight of incontrovertible evidence against him, Martel might have felt cornered into confessing despite his actual innocence. Oh, well, he's a minor though. I'm trying to he's dumb. give you a little facts about the situation, maybe you can remember exactly what happened. And lastly, there's beating facts. Do you remember what happened to the clothes you were wearing tonight? You know, just at home? Okay. You were wearing a hoodie? Okay. I know that. Detective Ains provides specific details about the crime scene and the victim, presenting them as facts that Martel supposedly already knew. There was a Hispanic dude, and they, five, ten, six employees wearing a hoodie. He kind of put you, it looks to me like he put you out of the store. Not physically, but when you got to the door, you closed the doors, and there was some kind of like altercation with the doors. And How is you telling, no more. And it looks to me like he put Tell him at some point. Ultimately, Martel ended up agreeing with or expanding on these provided details, thereby incriminating himself further with information he hadn't known or mentioned before. Under the pressure oh, yeah. of the interrogation, many claim Martel might have felt compelled to align his narrative with these details, further entangling himself in a false confession. I saw the video. I saw there were multiple people in there shopping. I saw you did not steal anything, you know what I'm saying? So that raised one question to me right away, like, why is this guy targeting this little kid? You know what I mean? Is that what's going to your head at the time? I mean, explain like what what you were thinking or what right. this guy what you got. I was like, I was behind. But I didn't like I knew something like I don't know if I'm being mistaken for another person or something. Okay. What explains that what happened there? Yeah, I walked in, like you said, he I was walking in, he just closed the door. And then yeah, I was asking him like why I could get into it and then he like I got a my temper and it's like I didn't have anything. Yeah. So you know if someone's told me to get out of the store for no Reason. I mean, upset too, you know what I'm saying? What happened to the gun? Is it in your bedroom? Because there's going to be an officer going over to your house in a few minutes to talk to your mom. If it's there, we need to know. Okay. Where's it at? Threw it. Where'd you throw it at? The trash can. <clears throat> then where'd you go after that? Straight home. Did you make any stops in between? So this is pretty damn good. Where is this garbage can? So it's around this area. Like so over here. Over here? Yeah. You're not sure exactly. Aggressive interrogation methods designed to break the will of a vulnerable teenager cast a long shadow on the integrity of the interrogation process. In a lawsuit filed by Martel Williams' family, they claimed that detectives violated ethical guidelines and leveraged psychological pressure points, exploiting Martel's fear and lack of understanding. The response to these tactics, the teenager's eventual false confession, underscores the profound impact such interrogation methods can have on individuals, particularly minors, who may not have the capacity to navigate these manipulative strategies effectively. Further complicating the situation with the Waukegan Police Department is the stark discrepancy between the physical characteristics of the initial suspect, Martel Williams, and the description provided by the police when they released the photo of the suspect. That looked like a whole different person. He looked short. He looked more stocky like the other dude he was mentioning. The police described the suspect as a black male in his late teens or early 20s hey, with a medium build, shorter. standing approximately 5 foot 6 to 5 foot 7. However, Martel is 6 foot 3 and weighed 155 pounds, which significantly deviates from the description provided by the police. The description aligns much more closely with Caleb S. Brown, a 20-year-old from Lake Villa who was later apprehended and charged with one count of aggravated battery with a deadly weapon in this case. Fortunately, store clerk Elvis Ramos survived this violent nice. encounter and has since been released from the hospital. Nice. They didn't tell me nothing or say nothing to me, they just say they're under arrest. Though Martel Williams' record has been expunged and both the mayor and police chief have issued apologies, Martel says this whole ordeal has left him with deep scars. His family has since sued the Waukegan Police Department, and that case is still pending. The two detectives are still employed by the Waukegan Police Department. This is continuing an ongoing problem. The Department of Justice has been in here, yet still this is still going on where there's false confessions being had by young men. The lack of disciplinary action against the officers has raised concerns about transparency and accountability. It was an incident that eroded his and the people's trust in the police, a heavy price for the small, friendly community of Waukegan. The fallout from Martel's story prompted a review of police policies in Waukegan, Illinois, especially with minors. A new state law now bans lying to minors during interrogations. A third-party firm 
Jensen Hughes, has been tasked with investigating how officers handle interrogations, especially involving children. Despite the false confession and subsequent wrongful arrest, the two officers who interrogated Martel Williams remain on the force. And while Martel was coerced into making a confession for a crime he didn't commit, if we listen to the interrogation video from the very beginning, listen again. Detective Ains and Martel Williams were familiar with each other. What ended up happening all that? Whatever happened in Martel's past shouldn't give police the legal or moral justification to have coerced his false confession for the shooting at the dollar store. But the world is a dirty place, and the fight against corruption is an eternal struggle. Those who forge a history of run-ins with the law also make themselves vulnerable to becoming ideal patsies when corruption surfaces in law enforcement and legal institutions. Stay out of trouble, kids. But in the wake of all this Yo, it's so crazy that this is still going on in 2024, man. They did my son Martel dirty. I'm glad my son is free. Moral of the story is you are, if you ever get booked for murder, anything like that, just ask for a lawyer, you are. Go from there. Just shot a bit before this, about to go shoot another one right now, you are. I'm going to see y'all there, so beat me there. Peace. Love. Dawn. You know the vibes. D O N L I L R E A C T. You are hit that subscribe button, notification bell. Thank y'all for popping out. Peace. Love. Dawn. You know the vibes.